Again, good morning and thank you for your patience and your kindness of staying with us. I'm going to be brief this morning, but I want to bring you the word um, that begins our Advent season. We are be in the beginning of Advent, anticipating the coming of our Lord, him being born into the world, Jesus being born. Please remember that I've asked you as you grab your Bibles and get ready to study for a few moments. I've asked you to stay connected to God, number one, staying connected to him through the disciplines of prayer, Bible study, and devotion. Number two, stay connected to each other. Stay connected to each other making sure we are checking on each other. And we've been praying for those who've been going through some difficult times in their lives. Number three, making sure that you invite someone to at least visit the website or YouTube or our Facebook and get the sermon. We would appreciate it for you, number three, to be connected to others that you know or don't know but giving them the invitation to join us. As we think about the end of the year, do y'all believe we're already on the sixth day of December of 2020? The year end is almost here. The year's end is almost here. We're praying that the Lord we know that he's in control. We're praying that 2021 will be a better year. But let me just say this, and I'm not prophesying. Let me just say this. Even if things do not change dramatically, what I've been encouraging you to remember is that God is in control. He is still our refuge and our strength. And we still must depend on him and walk this out through faith. He is in control. He wants us to depend on him, walk with him through this by faith. And I believe he will do just that. A sermon this morning and maybe the series that we will focus on as we go through the end of the year or up until the Sunday before Christmas is one word, chosen, chosen. I know that many of us, many times, would like to be chosen. Life is strange, can be strange at times, in moments of our history when things appear to be chaotic. But we need you to know that in strange times, God is still in control. He is still working. He is still doing what he needs to do to bring about his ultimate plan in the world chosen chosen think with me for a moment as we pray about this word chosen father we pray that you would bless your people as they hear your word today that you would encourage them that you would speak to their hearts father that you would inspire them and you would let them be make us transform let us hear you in such a way that our lives are never the same. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless now the proclamation and the hearers in Jesus' name. Amen. Chosen. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. Listen to the word. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, 
the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his sayings and considered what manner of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found a favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth the son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Chosen, chosen, turn over to Matthew, Matthew chapter 1. Beginning at verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, an angel, I'm sorry, behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And lastly, the prophetic word from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Just for a little while, three things that we will talk about. Chosen is something that we all like from time to time. Being chosen being distinguished from someone else, being distinguished or being separated out from someone else. Distinguished, being separated, or being called upon when others are there waiting as well. I want you to understand this morning that this chosen that we think about in the life of this young lady, this young girl named Mary and Joseph. They were chosen by God. They were chosen by God. As you heard me reading from Isaiah and the prophetic scripture says, the Lord himself, the Lord himself chooses the Lord himself. There have been some movies out that I want to call your attention to. One, several years ago, where Eddie Murphy was in this movie called The Chosen One. A selection, if you will, a distinguishing factor that he was the one or someone in the movie would be chosen by this divine creator that they would have these abilities 
or have something distinguishing about themselves that no one else would be called on to do. Chosen. We remember the movie, The Matrix. You remember Keanu Reeves. He was in the movie, The Matrix. And he was the one that was chosen by the elements in the movie to be the one to bring an end to the problems that were plaguing mankind. Chosen. Right now, there's a commercial with Charles Barkley. And he is standing, and this young girl, they're all young, looks like elementary school students. And she chooses Charles, older, but she chooses him. And he starts off by like, I knew she would choose me over you, chosen. And many times, brothers and sisters, we want to be chosen, whether it's a job opportunity, a promotion, or just someone that we want to be attracted to. We want to be chosen. Over these last few weeks, we have seen here in America, the nation has chosen its next leader. And no matter what they say about the voting, he has been chosen by the majority, 80 million people, to be the next leader of America. Chosen. Chosen. We find that this morning so distinguishing something about Mary. God called her and chose her to be the one that would bring into the world Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand this about Mary. She was not chosen when it happened. She was not chosen as a result of anything else other than God himself. Mary was chosen, if you will, before Mary was even born. Think about it for a moment. God chose her before she was born. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says he knows the plans that he has for us. The Bible tells us that he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. He already knew, and not just knew us physically and spiritually, that we were going to be become the children and the heirs to God, but he also knew the path that he wanted us to go on. He knew what he wanted us to do. He knew how he had programmed us or how he had made us, how he had orchestrated our DNA so that we could be what we are, so that when we are chosen, when we realize we are chosen by him, sometimes we allow our circumstances to hold us back. God chose. And this morning, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God chooses us. First of all, he chose us for salvation. He chose us for salvation. He chose us to be the children of God. He chose us because he knew he, that we would need him. And he chose us the Bible says that we were chosen by him, we were predestined by him, that we would become the royal priesthood of God, chosen. Brothers and sisters, God chooses us not because of who we are. He chooses us because of his divine favor on our lives. He chooses us. Amen, somebody. He chooses us. He's already chosen. He's already chosen the path that he has for us. He's already chosen things to happen in our lives. He's already chosen, no matter how bad your life looks, how many mistakes you think you have made, I should be preaching, how many things you had to overcome, God has already chosen us. The Bible says, as I read it in, in, in Isaiah, it says, God himself chooses, chose Mary. So brothers and sisters, just because someone else tries to disqualify you, just because your circumstances, and that's the next thing I want to talk to you about, is your circumstances. 
Number two, well, number one, God chooses. Number two, think about your circumstances. The Bible says here in Matthew and here in Luke and even in Isaiah that he chooses a virgin. Think about that for a moment. He chooses a virgin or the virgin would be a sign that this is God at work. All the way back in Isaiah, the prophetic word is that he's going to, this will be the sign that you will know that this is going to be the birth, the one who will bear the Messiah or the one that God has chosen to be the one that will come and be the redemptive one that will work out our salvation. He chooses and he chose Mary. He chooses a virgin, a virgin. Sometimes God allows circumstances to look like it's impossible to bring about his will in this world. Many times we are focused on sometimes the obstacles, a virgin. Someone who had never known intimacy, sexuality with another person. He chooses a virgin. He chooses that which looks impossible. He chooses that which looks like it, it's incomprehensible. He chooses that which looks like it can never happen. But God chooses those things that looks like they will never come to pass. He chooses to bring those and make those work out for our good to bring about what he wants to have happen. When others have disqualified you, when others and circumstances will say it's too late or you've too old or these things are not in place God still chooses to bring about his work and word in the world say amen somebody your circumstances don't allow your circumstances to defeat you don't allow your present condition to stop your future destiny don't allow your present condition to be such that you are thinking more about it than the power of God. Listen, God brings an angel who is dispatched from heaven. The angel is Gabriel, dispatched from heaven to this young girl and tells her she has been chosen. Highly favored one. You have been chosen from among the women. Because God has found favor with you. And I know some of you are saying, I've done too much. My past is so dirty. Or my past is so mangled. Even my present, my present situation has caused me to look at my past more and have more conviction about it than I do about the goodness of what God can do in the future. I came to bring you a word this morning that no matter what your circumstances, your present circumstances, your present reality is, it has no bearing on what God wants to do for you and what God will do for you in the future. Number one, God chooses. God chooses, not man. Not man doesn't choose. God will cause men to give you favor, to have favor with you. Number two, don't allow your circumstances to hold you back. So many of us would allow our circumstances to hold us back. Don't allow your present condition to prevent your future success. Look to it with faith. Look to it with confidence in God. Look to it and say, God, you're working this out for your good, for my good. God, you're going to bring about something through my present situation or through my past that's going to work out for my good and others' good. Lord, don't miss that. So many times we become myopic and thinking only about ourselves. But God says, I'm working in you so I can bring about a greater reality in the world. Number one, God chooses. It's up to him. Number two, don't allow your circumstances to hold you back. And number three, finally, know that you will be fruitful in the future. Know that you will be fruitful. 
that the things that God will do will cause you to bear fruit regardless of your current reality. Just look at the text. Verse 31 of Luke chapter 1, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. Being fruitful. Being fruitful. God wants to do something amazing so that you can bear fruit. John chapter 15 tells us, Without him we can do nothing. But ultimately he wants us to bear fruit. Over the last month or so, we talked about gifts. And the gifts of the Spirit, God chooses, remember the gift that he wants you to have because he knows how he has constructed you. He knows the things that you have, he's allowed for your past and for your present that will not necessarily be indicators of your future. But he will allow those things into your life so that you can have a richer future, a richer success in the future. So just understand that he wants us, he desires for us to be fruitful. That's what Mary was, brothers and sisters. God chose her. God understood her circumstances, but her circumstances, Mary says, will not hold me back if you continue to read the, 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 the story that God, that she were convinced in herself that if God says it, I don't understand it, but I know God can work it out. Can I get an amen, somebody? God can work it out for us to be fruitful even when it looks like we are barren or we are virgin or there is nothing there that we have done of ourselves to bring this to pass because when you keep reading the story, the Bible says that it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary didn't have anything to do with it. Mary didn't, Joseph didn't have anything to do with it. It was all because of the power of God chosen, chosen chosen brothers and sisters let me leave you with this as i close that you have been chosen before the foundation of the world before you knew who you were before your parents knew who you were and though even before then god knew who you were and you are chosen for good works all i'm trying to tell you this morning before i leave you and take my seat i just want you to understand that you have been chosen no matter how old you are, uh, Gideon, uh, Simeon was chosen, and, and Elizabeth was chosen, and John was chosen, even Zechariah was chosen. They were all chosen by God, and we're going to look at them as we go forward, that they were chosen by God for good works. Not for just works of man, not just works to live, but they were chosen for works of salvation, chosen for works of things they had prayed for and asked God for. And what I'm saying to you this morning, you have been chosen. You ought to go ahead and, and if you can, touch somebody. If you can, say to yourself, I've been chosen. God has chosen me. God has singled me out. God has re, God has re put his light on me. God has given me favor. Somehow what is, I'm going through is not going to hold me back for what God has for me. You ought to shout right there, God has chosen you for greater. Can you just get happy about that? For greater, God has chosen you. Chosen. As we go through the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at this aspect of being chosen. By God, Mary, a virgin. Circumstances look like it's impossible. A virgin. But God chooses her virginity to work out salvation. No matter what you have gone through, some of you say, well, she was untainted and nothing was wrong with her. Oh, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, God chose Moses. He was tainted. He had done things, but God still chose him. God still uses him. And I'm going to tell you about us as we go through this. So stay with me for the next two or three weeks as we look at our lives and learn some lessons from what God wants to do in this aspect of being chosen. This morning, if you don't know who Jesus is and you've never asked him into your heart, I ask you this morning to give Jesus your heart. Right now, he's choosing you. If you would just open up the door and let him in, God 
It's choosing you if you don't know him. And the pardon of your sin, you never ask him into your heart. And here is all you have to pray. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God and that you came and that you lived and you died and was raised again. And now you sit at the right hand of God. And I confess with my mouth that I believe in you with my heart. And you said, I shall be saved. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a new believer. But believers need to be, become disciples. So we want you to stay with us. We want you to make sure that you are studying God's word. That's what makes you a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ a follower, a disciple, one who studies the word and one who stays with him and let God orchestrate your step, your future, your path so that you can be what he wants you to be. We're going to pray in a moment for those right now who are struggling with this aspect. How can God use me? Let me remind you, and it is an encouraging word, that you have been chosen. We all have been chosen. We're going to pray. Remind yourself. Say, it's not too late. It's not over. Even though the circumstances and the obstacles look like they are insurmountable, it's not over. God is in control, and he will govern my life. Let's pray. Father, I pray for these who have heard your word. Father, let them have the renewedness of spirit to realize they have been chosen. Like Mary for good works or to bring about your word, your works in the world. So we ask you this morning, God, that those who are disappointed and disillusioned and hurt and anxious, that this word will inspire them, that they will somehow understand by your spirit. Give them your spirit that they will understand that they have been chosen for greater. That great things are in their future if they just trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. And again, we apologize for the interruptions of our internet. Continue to pray. We appreciate that. I pray that you would have a wonderful week, a good week, as we push forward in this Advent season to hear what God has to say to us. Thank you again for your, your continued support in your finances and your giving and honoring God with your, the first fruit of all of your increases. And we know that God tells us that if we would give to him, he would open the windows of heaven and pour out us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. So remember those five ways to give, PayPal, Cash App. You can have it automatically deducted. You can go to our website or you can bring it by the church. Any of those ways, we are thankful. We are so grateful on behalf of the Board of Counselors and all of us, we are thankful for you continuing to support and honor God with your giving, with your substance that God has allowed you to have. God bless you. Have a great week. Please be mindful of the discipline or the discipleship classes that we are having that we want you to be a part of. God bless you. Have a great week. Say this with me. Be strong, be bold, and stay encouraged. Be bold, be strong, and stay encouraged. The Lord bless you. I love you until we see each other again. The Lord be with you.